In this tutorial, we'll be building this real-time stats monitor using Flutter and Firebase. My name is Dane from Foldstacks. Please like this video and let's get going. One quick thing. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and activate your notifications. We'll start off by generating our template using the scope model architecture from App Skeletons. If you don't want to create a template using App Skeletons, you can skip to this timestamp and clone the repo in the description. Go to appskeletons.com and sign up for a free account. Select Flutter as your framework and select scope model as your architecture. Name the project Skeleton Watcher. Then add one empty view called Home and we'll also add a list view called Feedback. Generate the app and then download the code. You can then unzip the project and open it up in your IDE. When opening the project for the first time, make sure that all the packages are fetched. The stats we'll be using is stored in the Firestore database. I have a collection called Informations and inside there's a document called Project Stats. This document has three fields, app count, error count and user count. All of it is number fields. Now we can connect the Firebase SDK to our app. You can follow the guide in the description below since we won't be covering that in this tutorial. Once everything is set up, we'll start by creating our Firebase service. In the lib folder, create a new folder called services. Then under services, create a new file called Firebase service. Then we can register our service with a locator as a lazy singleton. This is how I would like the implementation to go. We want to get the real-time document snapshots from Firebase. We'll convert the snapshot data into a model that our app understands. And then we want to put that on a stream that will change our state for us. To get the real-time documents from Firebase, we will get the Firebase instance and get our informations collection. And then we will get our project stats document. We'll request the stream of snapshots using the snapshots function. And then we'll listen to that stream and we'll pass our values to a stats updated function. We'll convert the document snapshot into a stats model. Under the models folder, create a new file called stats. Create a new stats class. Inside create a final integer called user count and then another integer for app count and another one for error count. These will all be initialized through the constructor and then we'll add a static from snapshot function that will initialize the user count, the app count and the error count from the snapshot data. The stats updated function will take in a document snapshot and convert that to a stats model. It will then place that model onto a stream that we can consume. Create a stream controller in the Firebase service called stats controller. Then create your stats updated function that takes in a document snapshot. And inside that function, we'll add a new stats model onto our controller and we'll convert it using the from snapshot function. The last thing to do is to expose the stream publicly so that our models can consume it. In the home view model, we'll get a Firebase service instance from the locator. And we'll also store the stats as a property so that we can access it from the UI. We want the state of our home view model to change as new stats arrive from the Firebase service. So we'll create a constructor and in the constructor we'll listen to the app stats stream. Create your on stats updated function that takes in a stats model. We'll set the app stats equal to the new stats that came in. If it's null, we'll show a busy indicator, else we'll indicate that the data has been fetched. In the home view file, we will be checking the state of our model and then showing UI depending on the state. Create a get body function that takes in the home model and the build context as parameters. For the body of our scaffold, we'll set it to the return value of this get body function. Inside the get body function, we will switch on the state. When the view state is busy or idle, we'll return a progress indicator in the center of the screen. And for all other states, we'll return the stats UI. We want the stats UI to look something like this. We won't be covering any of the UI layout and styling in this tutorial. I've already built the widgets for this UI and they can be found in the written tutorial in the description below. In the widgets folder, you'll create new files for each of the widgets. We'll create a stats counter and copy the code in there. Then we'll create an indicator button and copy that code over as well. And lastly, we'll create a widget toolbar and we'll copy the code from the written tutorial as well. Now you can create a function called getStatsUI that returns a widget and takes in a model and the build context as a parameter. The UI can be seen as a simple vertical stack. So for the root of our getStatsUI, we will return a column. 
For each of the three sections in the design, we'll use a fixed height container. As you can see, there's also a top border decoration. So each of the containers will have an optional decoration that it can take in. At the top of the home view file, we'll put a box decoration called top line border decoration. It's a normal box decoration with a border and the top value is set to a border side with a light gray color and a width of five. Then we can add our get height container function, which will take in the height, context, the child and uh, optional as top stroke value. And now we can start building up the UI. The first child in the column will be a watcher toolbar with a title skeleton watcher. The second child will be placed in a fixed height container. We'll give it a height that is half the screen height minus the toolbar height. And the child will set as a stats container. We'll set the size of the stats container equal to the height of the height container and we'll minus 60 for the margins on the side. The count will take in the error count from the model and the title will be error. The next container will be set to the screen height divided by three and decreased by the toolbar height as well. The child will be a row that takes up the full width of the screen. We'll set its alignment to space the children evenly. We'll set the first child equal to a stats counter with the same height as the container's height minus 60 for the margins. And we'll do the same for the apps created stats counter. For the count, we'll pass in the user count and the app count from the stats in our view model. And the last section is a fixed height container with height equal to the screen's height divided by six and decreased by the toolbar height. We'll place an indicator button and give it a title of feedback and on tap, we will navigate to the feedback view. If you run this code now, you should see the app looking similar to the screenshot without the dashed lines. If you update your collection on the Firebase service, you'll see that your count updates in real time as things change. That's where we'll end this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you want to see the follow-up tutorial where I implement the real-time feedback list.